welcome back to the channel. We are the Bros of DK and we take you on adventures all around the world. For this week's episode, we take you again to Fukushima. On March 11, 2011, a disaster happened in Japan. The prefecture, the province of Fukushima, was hit by an earthquake. The coastal cities flooded, but this was not the worst part. There was a nuclear power plant, the Daiichi power plant. This one went into shutdown and exploded afterwards. 180,000 people had to flee their homes because of nuclear radiation. It now has been 9 years since the disaster. We are gonna take you back into Fukushima because there are some parts really open to the public and to the people that once lived there. Many people don't want to move back to their houses because they are still scared of the radiation. We completely understand this. In one of the coastal cities, we found two beautiful abandoned houses to film with everything left behind unfortunately of the people that once lived there. Those we are gonna explore today and show you what's left behind. If you want to see more of the Fukushima series, in the description there are all the videos linked. Let's explore these places. We're standing now inside of a ghost town in the middle of Fukushima and we just arrived here and it's pretty crazy. People are allowed to move back to this place because this is in the green zone of Fukushima and we are allowed to be here but nobody does it because a lot of the people that lived here they're too scared to get back. Found another house that's open so let's go in there and film this. Look at that. There's chandeliers. This looks like a praying room. No way. Oh my gosh. So these are the mat mats that Japanese people use to sit on the ground. Completely destroyed. And in here they put these little sands to light it up. And then they do their prayers. Look at that, it's like a living room. Oh, this looks like a time capsule. Look at the chandelier up there. Oh, amazing. Go inside, Jody. Lovely to see something like this. I think that we are the first ones to document something like this. There's even the pills still on the table, the papers. Japanese people are crazy about business cards, so they always make these business cards. You see, they have boxes and boxes of their business cards. If you go to a business meeting in Japan, you should always bring your business cards. If you go to a business meeting in Japan, you should always bring your business cards. If you go without it, they will think you're an amateur. We're now walking into the kitchen, but you can see over here that the earthquake brought a lot of devastation to this house. All the boxes have been moved around. I think around this area there was an earthquake about 7 or 8 on the scale. Crazy. No freaking way. Look at the kitchen, man. Over here we go into the hallway. A bathroom over here. Oh my gosh. You have these jugs. I don't know what to do with these jugs. It's like fuel or something like that. Sink. Oh yeah. Then here's the Japanese entrance of the home, like we always see. With oh yeah, the, the, the shine has left they there. They packed everything. Yeah, but I don't think that was... They didn't knew that the disaster was coming, right? Yeah, but maybe after... Yeah, they were told. but there was a big tsunami over here, so I think the whole house has been flooded. Right? Mm -hmm. Possible. 
possible, right? So over here we got the Japanese entrance of the house, the hallway where they put off their shoes and put on their slippers. There are even some slippers left down here. Damn, look at the spider webs. Eight years ago left behind. Oh my God. In the closet there are one, two, three, four, and then three pairs of slippers over there. So around seven pairs of slippers with yeah, I think multiple people got multiple slippers. <laughs> nah. Let's have a look at their bedroom. Let's check that out. What's this little door? Oh my gosh. So before we go in, uh, Japanese people always have toilet slippers inside of the toilet. So when you uh, put your normal slippers off, you put your toilet slippers on. <laughs> it's really crazy. And then you have this squatting toilet over there. And in the reservoir up there, you also always have a sink on top of it. So when you go, uh, when you flush the toilet, the sink starts to run and it fills up the reservoir. So that's pretty smart. That's uh, no wasting of water actually. And the toilet paper is even left as well. Look what Steve just found. Wait. Yeah, man. Thank you. I'm only one-handing it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> this wow. is pretty cool. Look at that. Yeah, man. I don't know the exact name of it, but it's like a wooden version of a, like to practice how to fight like with a samurai sword. Mm -hmm. A katana. So they would they would practice with this and then fight with the real thing. Yeah. Let's try that. <laughs> oh, they were both one-handing it. We're now gonna move on to the next place. This was a little bit further into the town. This was a cafe called Yoon Cafe. These people had this cafe and their house was attached to it. Everything is left behind in it. I find the worst part of all that they never came back to retrieve their personal items. Let's go through the house with respect. Everything is left behind. So crazy. Over there we got these abandoned vending machines. You can see these used to be abandoned. Yeah, this used to be cigarette vending machines for the people of the town. This used to be a pretty big town actually. Yeah, These so are all not working anymore. Wow. See the container full. Container full of drinks. Coin slots. Oh my gosh. But this was an amazing town as you can see. Come onto the street. Nobody in either direction. But look at the cherry blossom trees. Wow. Over there is an abandoned school, but it's been surveilled, so there are cameras around it. So we can't show you inside of the place because the Japanese people take their, take their surveillance pretty seriously. So we're now gonna take a look inside of the cafe over here. So we're now inside of the abandoned cafe, the Yoon Cafe and Tomiyoke, the abandoned ghost town in Fukushima. And this used to be a little local cafe where the people of the town would come and would enjoy themselves. Yeah, this would be a pretty nice place, I guess. And you got these dividers over here with a nice design on it gas heater down there let me see what we can find around here yeah japan it's very common when you go inside of a building you need to wear these slippers you need to put off your shoes and put on some slippers damn <laughs> plastic fruits oh my gosh already on the wall look at the calendar 2011 that's the that's the year that that it happened over here so it's been abandoned since 2011, March, 11th of March, 2011. Let's pray respect for the people over here. I hope nobody died inside of the cafe. Man, it's too bad. Over here they would prepare the drinks and everything. There's also a house attached to, attached to the cafe. So there must have, a family must have lived here. Oh no, I hope they are all okay. Damn. Around 18,000 people died here in Fukushima when a nuclear disaster happened. Most of the people died from the tsunami, of course. But there's a lot of contamination around here. And 
a lot of people are getting cancer and stuff like that. Over here, all all these cups, these foam cups to put noodles inside. Chopsticks are left. No way. Oh my gosh. An ashtray. Oh, look at the wall. Oh, the plushy animals. Incredible. <laughs> so cool. There's a little bit of a wardrobe. You can see, they got some religious things up here. Nail polish. No way, man. Nail book. Is this like a comic? Seems like it. <laughs> Look at the man on the, on the cover. Wow, completely destroyed. Fridge and everything. On the wall, we have this little amulet. Some Japanese writing. Look at this here on the wall in the living room. We have all these little stripes. So the children would stand against the wall and the mother or the father would take a stripe from their height. So you can see over here, this is the same as symbols as this one. So the child grew over time. So then he was this high, then he was this high, then he was this high. So he grew till this certain point and then a disaster happened over here. So he's probably like 10 years old now and now he's like, he's an adult right now. So 10 plus eight, 18 years old right now. Let's go through there. But over here we can get into the kitchen. And as you can see, this is a typical Japanese kitchen. We've seen it in one of uh, the other videos that I also filmed. Everything left. No way, man. Even their dishes are still in the sink. The last cups that these people turned up from in 2011. Crazy to see. Over here, there's the bathroom. No way, man. The washing machine. Even the last shirt that they tried to wash is still in there. So before we go upstairs, I want to show you all the shoes that are left behind. Wow. So in, in 2011, 11th of March, 180,000 people were evacuated from the area in Fukushima. And they had to leave everything behind and get out of the area as soon as possible. I'm now going to take a look upstairs here. See you at the bedrooms. When these people are going to move back to their houses, they are allowed to, they can move back. This is a house from somebody and they're probably going to come back someday, but now it's really contaminated, uh, yeah, still contaminated. And I don't think they think that it's safe to be here with the kids and everything. So when they come back, they're going to have to do a full renovation of the home. I hope the Japanese government helps them, give them some funds for it. Where are these beds? Oh no, look over here, Johnny. Here they would store the mattresses and at night they would take them out and they would put them on the floor. And yeah, the Japanese people, they always sleep on the floor. So you can see. A little closet over here. Not a few things left behind. These were some jewelry, but there's nothing left in the boxes. So it probably came here and got it all. The telephone and everything. Wow. 
So I want to thank you guys for watching the video. This was an incredible place that we just explored. Everything was left behind. It was really sad to see that the children might have been inside of here in this place and it is now just gone. It was so close to the Daiichi power plant and to the sea where the tsunami happened. I hope you guys enjoyed the story and everything behind it. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was kind of sad, but it's like we want to show it to you guys how it is, how it happened. And yeah, I just want to document everything. So thank you for watching the video. Please like, subscribe and comment. Donate, donate a little bit on Patreon so that we can explore more of Japan and more of the world. Um, you get some nice benefits from it. Uh, if you do, donate more than $5 a month, you get the videos earlier and some other great benefits. Check it out with the link in the description. So yeah. Thank you guys and I will see you next week for another great Fukushima uh, exploring adventure. Bye guys, love you.